Hello, uh, this is Renzu uh, coming from the online section of the ECE 574. This is my first uh, paper reading uh, presentation. My paper is about the robustness testing of embedded software system. An industrial interview study was the authors is coming from the Sweden and by three uh, Swedish uh, research and of course a presentation by me. So this paper the motivation behind this paper is to provide a knowledge based on state of practice in robustness testing of embedded software system and try to compare this to the state of the art. Um, because this paper showed the state of, state of the practice, especially when it is come to the robustness testing, the difference uh, between the organization and it's quite different from the state of the art described in some scientific literary literatures. Um, for example, uh, methods commonly described in the literature like uh, fuzzy approach, uh, approach and uh, some benchmark approach are not in not used in the organization um, that those uh, authors they study. Instead of that, uh, the interviewees describe several you know, ad hoc uh, approaches that take specific case scenario into account. Well, this paper, the gathering the information by conducting three semi-structured interviews and the interviews coming from several uh, different industrial domains such as telecommunication, automotive, and the multimedia, and the um, critical infrastructure, and so on. Those industry, they some of them, they conduct the robustness testing in their um, in their organization by using some method and some definition from the uh, IEEE and some you know uh, state of art uh, works. But some of them, they might be using some different way or might be similar way, but not exactly the definition coming from the state of art. So let's see um, what's are they, what are they? What's the difference between these two states? So first of all, uh, they try to characterize uh, some uh, some special things for the embedded software system. So first of all, the embed embedded software system are developed to uh, perform a specific task and uh, in a specific environment. And the challenge for the tester is to test the system in a host-based and a target-based concept. Secondly, the interaction is very important to the target based, uh, to uh, important to characterize in the operation of the embedded software system. The embedded system typically they operate in and interact with an external environment by collecting data through sensor and acting the, upon this collected data through the, the actors. So, Sometimes the failure of rec reacting, recreating this interaction during the test may lead to inadequate or erroneous uh, conclusions. So the third uh, character characterize of the embedded software system are the the embedded where, uh, embedded software system. Most time in practice, in development or practice, they are varies using various you know, interface and the um, deploying and the supporting uh, platforms. So that's very different to the uh, to the laboratory. So the fourth uh, characterize uh, they they are focused not focused on the perform the correct behavior. They rather than to do the perform the correct behavior at the right time, which means some uh, traditional software testing methods are useful for the identify function errors and uh, attaining a high test coverage in embedded software system, but uh, it, it may not be uh, comprehensive enough to uncover the robustness test uh, problem that occur because the environment errors such as unexpected or erroneous input values. So. Some of the regular uh, software testing methods, they are not designated for the robustness testing of the 
the system. So they are more useful for detecting the functional errors and attaining high test coverage in Evastive software system. So next one, we are going to review the definition of robustness in the IEEE. So from the IEEE standard 16.12-1990s, uh, uh, the degree to which a system or component can function correctly in the presence of invalid inputs or stressful environment conditions. This is the definition uh, from the IEEE general. But um, from general considerations, the requirement uh, for the or the definition for the robustness sometimes is um, you can simply understand that there are no runtime errors, no crashes, or no deadlock. But for some specific re requirements, such as the capability of the system to always return a nominal state after entering a degree state, or some system resources remain available for high priority tasks. So, in general, the main aim of the robustness is to test the capability of the software system to handle the adverse situation caused by the internal or external factors. So, this is the definition uh, about the robustness. But of course, uh, from this paper's uh, result, some of the interviewees uh, they come, generally they agree the definition, but they may have some you know, special things uh, through their work in the in the daily. So, even the industrial sharing some agreement on the robustness definition, but sometimes a lack of understanding of robustness in the industry and the very uh, consideration between the companies and the industrial context lead to a an unclear view of the gap between the state of art and the state of practice. So let's see, let's do some review about the common robustness failure and the, the reasons. So the in the scientific literature, the robustness failure sometimes have been categorized can be categorized uh, as the crash benchmark. So the C uh, for the for the first one is catastrophic failure. This means this level of the failure would lead to a uh, catastrophic failure to the whole system by a single task and a spread to other tasks. Which means that this is the most higher most higher level of the failure for the uh, robustness failure. The second one is the restart failures, so which means an abnormal task resulting in the system need to kill and restart it to return a normal state. The abort failure, a single task experiencing an abnormal termination, which means um, sometimes um, the single task is executing uh, normally, but, but for some reason it's been killed or been terminated by the system, so this is kind of the abort failure. So silent failure is kind of a, a strange one uh, because it's very hard to detect it and uh, very hard to find out the, uh, where where the point is. So the system will never evoke an error code or other tags failure when some invalid parameter are, are given in. So and the, the hinder failure. The operating system is applying an incorrect error code rather than correct action after detected a problem. So this five category has been marked and been categorized by the scientific literature. And uh, most of them, they, they, of course, they are uh, being agreed by the, by the academic uh, state of the art. So let's do some summary of the scientific literature. So only few of the study focus on the testing uh, of the robustness of the embedded software system compared to testing uh, uh, robustness of the software. Um, and uh, sometimes m almost all the studies focus on the state of the art uh, perspective rather than state of the practice. And the state of art only used for the specific domain. So you can we can see currently most of the 
um, scientific literature works that are fo focused on the state of art, and uh, uh, only few, maybe uh, according to the paper, only one works describe the state of uh, practice in the industrial. So they try to do some research by interviewing some people in the in the industry. Uh, try to figure out why the people do the, didn't use the state of art and why the state of art ap approaches is so hard to adapt it by the industry. So the interview case study is conducted by the authors. They uh, through they design the interview by carefully designing the interview questions and uh, they category the questions into different uh, several groups. Uh, like uh, definition of robustness requirement uh, for the robustness testing and um, test design perf and performing the uh, testing uh, robustness failure and tools used for the robustness testing and uh, some additional questions. So when they select the interviewee, some of them is from the industrial uh, context in the author's network and some from the LinkedIn with the you know, profile with, of the experts of robustness testing. And uh, they're using um, line -linear, uh, uh, a non-linear linear, uh, qualitative uh, analysis model to, uh, to do the data analysis. So let's see their uh, interview result. So about the definition. The definition of robustness uh, from IEEE is generally accepted by the respondents, but in most the case, the the interviewee either did not use any definition in their organization in uh, using the IEEE definition in their organization and their work, and they might be have some uh, some other different kind of definition um, in their organization. Furthermore. Several interviews mentioned the system ability to cope with noise attacks and the molecular data. This should be part of the definition of the robustness. So, and the tester from the aerospace and automotive domain said that they do not use the term robustness generally because they think the robustness is the property that related to the safety and the system should step into a safe state in response of the failure. So, through the through the first part about the definition, we can see uh, the people in the industrial they share some common agreement on the definition, but they're not totally understand it because in different in specific uh, environment or situation, the the things will be changed. So the interviewee from the multimedia and the talent com domain is considered. And the robustness is the ability to make a quick recover and that the system behavior when failing is predictable. And um, one inter interviewee stated that the uh, fault tolerance is, should be part of the robustness. So the key aspect of robustness embedded system, uh, robust embedded software system. So in the domain of the telecom and the multimedia, people more concerned about the uh, that no single point of failure and a graceful degradation, um, degradation as the key aspect of the robustness embedded software system. And the, the interviewee from the critical infrastructure domain focused on no single point of failure. And they su also suggest that they use a, a standby, house standby computer for ready to take over uh, the, the, the tax when a problem happened within the central system. So. When the study, the when the study uh, continue, they analyze the the people to the requirement for the robustness testing. So most people will suggest the avail uh, the availability seems to be a key aspect in all domains. That means uh, almost all the interviewees from their uh, industry is agree with the availability. So to Especially to handle some special uh, situations such as overload, the molecular uh, traffic, or repetitive uh, occurrence of the restarts and the failovers. 
And some people also uh, mentioned that the data integration, failure rates, latency, and the response time should be considered about the requirement as the requirement of, for the robustness testing. The and uh, the research the research also indicated that the uh, the robustness requirement comes where where are they come from? So you can um, you can see from the uh, in the state of practice. Um, the customer experience and the customer behaviors that customer need is most uh, uh, taking a lot of uh, percentage uh, of the robust uh, robust tech uh, behavior uh, requirements. Of course, uh, the uh, some of the requirements coming from the regulatory uh, standards and some and, the, and from their own organizations. So, of course, the safety concern. Uh, they of, of course they, they do some analysis about the. Different domain and a different uh, people are more uh, think about the requirement come from the safety concerns come from the regularity standards and the, the service quality come from the own organization or the agreement of the development. So when they design the robustness testing, um, people. In the industry, they are using some ad hoc and experiment based robust uh, uh, design method to uh, design method to design the te uh, robustness testing. So rather than do some systematic uh, methods, only few systematic techniques being used in the test design, such as uh, boundary value analysis and the search based situ uh, simulation. And testing for the identify violations for the resource consumption, um, but uh, through the work, um, I will introduce I explain in the, in the next few pages because about I just want to mention that it doesn't mean that those people didn't use the um, the method in the state of market. They try to use some other way. Try to you know try to do uh, around. Uh, to reach their their point, to reach their goals. So, the the interview of of course uh, they gather the information about the organization uh, who uh, like uh, uh, who will perform the robustness testing in the organization. They find the three different organization approaches. So, the organization with no dedicated robustness testing staff. Or team, and uh, of course they don't have a uh, specific uh, testing for the robust uh, in the in the organization. Another kind of organization is um, they don't have the people uh, dedicated on the robust testing, but the organization uh, mentioned uh, but the robust testing is monitored is mandatory to the organization. And the third one, organization with dedicated staff, or they have a uh, People dedicated uh, for the robustness testing and the robustness specific, uh, robustness specific testing is mandated. Um, the, these three are uh, different uh, testing, which means um, which which we can you can imply that some of the company maybe do not think uh, we do not make the robustness test as the as very important one. The robustness testing may be coming through the their testing uh, approach, but they don't make it as a separate uh, uh, in, in the individual testing aspect. But of course, uh, that which means you know those organizations have no dedicated people and staff, uh, um, and they do not mandatory to do the robustness. But it doesn't mean they do not do the robustness testing. There's something similar in their testing work. So. For the uh, summary of the the interview result, for the definition of the re, uh, re robustness, it's not only uh, you know from I triple E is said uh, the system should be uh, active correctly through the uh, under the stressful environment uh, and uh, of course the invalid input, but the, it's um, for the interviewees. Uh, they are not only uh, they mention it's not only a stressful environment, but of course uh, misbehaving, a misbehaving uh, environment and the 
and the connect the equipment, which means it's not the embedded software itself. It's including the the environment where where the embedded software work with and where the embedded the work working work on. So it's a very complexity um, working environment, not a single um, environment. So the state of our method is not used in practice. However, they maybe follow some similar procedure to perform robustness testing. The state of art works only deal with the robustness testing of the operating system. In reality, the testing is performing in several other contexts. So this is the point. So the state of art is only deal with the robustness testing of the operating system. But in reality, you know, the software will working on a complexity uh, context, which means uh, it's not only about the operating system. It's about uh, uh, a combination of the environment is uh, difficult and um, very complex environment. So the conclusion. Uh, the robustness testing in literature more focused on the software alone and in most uh, cases only on operating system rather than the embedded software. The method commonly seen in the laboratory such as uh, FADI, FADS uh, uh, approaches are not used in the industry and the author study uh, that author study. Instead of that, People in the industry, uh, they apply some several ad hoc approaches that take a specific scenario into account, like a power failure or overload. And um, for this paper, the knowledge about the, of the state of the practice is essential for the research in order to create a solution that are feasible for the industry and adapted uh, to the industry approaches. So basically, this paper of work, um, the author tried to find a different and try to figure out why the people didn't use the, um, the state of art method in the practice. Um, you, you can understand because in the laboratory, sometimes the state of art is very uh, focused on one specific point and in a specific uh, environment. But uh, in the practice world, um, People have to more things to consist, consider about the, you know, uh, like a product design, software design, and the customer requirement, and some others uh, factors that maybe uh, affect the, the the system or the or the product. So they have more uh, things to affect the, their decision to design to using to to apply the approaches and they, of course they have to consider about the cost and you know, some time and timeline things so it's a different but uh, from this work uh, we can have some idea in the future uh, especially for the research of course uh, researchers of course um, we try to design a feasible way uh, for the in for the practice world so in order to help them to adopt some of the method in the that the research result. Thank you. This is my